recess. Recess for the, for the budget period. Do this first, if you can. Yeah. Oh. All right. I guess we'll go back in session. Are you in? <laughs> Where are you? Yeah. Yes. I move we approve the minutes of the August 5th meeting. I'll we'll second. Motion to second to approve the minutes of August 5th. I'll say aye. Aye. I guess we'll recess for the budget hearing. Oh. You want me to turn it off? Yeah. Uh, we recess for the budget hearing. Well, we recess. And I'll reconvene this for the budget hearing. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so you can <coughs> sit here and do nothing. Here for it. Concerns of parking and the red, and <clears throat> but they had that lined out and handled pretty good. Where's it going to be at? Uh, two miles east, west of Maxville, and two miles south, or about three quarters south. One, two, two and a half south, I guess. But there was concerns about, you know, if they had an emergency or a fire or the time of the take to respond to that. That was some questions. What's it located in that? Oh, they, re, they refurbished an old barn and kind of opened it up. We're getting them dug a pond out there. And it's pretty neat. So it all three signed this one. Stage team. I move that the separate budget is presented for 2016. Second. Uh, motion is second to approve the budget is presented for 2016. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> I don't think they're coming this way. <laughs> some people come up quietly, and some people, you can hear them. Oh. Just one of these, Lisa? Uh, yes. On that one, yes.
have these memorandum of, of agreements have to be motion and second, or that all encompasses the budget? Motion.
come, you know, they kind of play into employment, and housing, and education, and a lot of things. So we're kind of toying with this idea of trying to address that. One part being maybe um, the Drug Enforcement Task Force. We've been talking with local law enforcement about their openness to it, and I had a discussion with Attorney General Schmidt also on whether they'd be able to support this at the state level, and I think there's some support there. Still have some things to work out, but that's kind of what we're thinking about. And um, again, kind of working through some of this, but maybe some discussion on whether we could implement some mental health services at the local level here, because we don't really have much going on there, and um, possibly that could be something that expands the scope of services available here. Maybe even that would improve some, you know, provide some employment opportunities so or um, And if we can figure out a way to um, include the daycare element in it, that's always something we talk about is a need in our county. I just don't know. They don't, one thing that they don't fund through this is salaries. So they fund a lot, they make it very broad, but they don't fund salaries. And a lot of these things you do have to pay people to do it. Um, so even like in drug enforcement, we're trying to kind of talking about, well, what if we paid for um, a lot of the cost of patrolling, like travel, gas, and you know, that free up some of your budget to then pay some overtime, you know? We have to be kind of creative that way, but we're trying to find some ways that we could fund what's needed within the parameters of what's eligible. So, I'm doing I'm coming here. Um, we well, did come to us through the King Association of Counties. Um, successful proposals will include a county official who serves as the lead applicant. <laughs> and, the, and the proposal must include partnership with a relevant nonprofit organization. Funds will only hold funds will only be, be distributed via a 501c3 organization. So clearly economic development can serve as that role, but we have to work in collaboration with the county. So um, the applications are due September 4th. So I guess kind of want to survey your interest in proceeding as we might as well. Won't hurt. Sounds good. Um, we also had an economic development board meeting this morning and had similar discussion there. I mean, again, funds would presumably be um, dispersed through that organization. Similarly, they're open to continuing to proceed. Um, good. Um, so you're thinking. Drug enforcement and daycare. And mental health. And mental health. Yeah. Housing is also eligible. So if we can figure out a way to put some housing in there, that'd be great too. And then suddenly this great big, um, you know, $100,000 pot starts to get a little small. Yes, it does. Um, That's just, just one award in the state. One award. Um, and the other reason that I was kind of thinking that drug enforcement might be something to consider is that maybe it's it can distinguish us. It's not just another, we want to have exercise classes right. and cooking classes to improve public health. Maybe it's a little more... Safe sidewalks. <sighs> trying to be innovative and really more introspective and, and looking at root causes. Maybe we can stand out a little bit as the hope. Okay. <coughs> so we'll proceed, I guess, and... Um, um, we'll bring back at some point a proposal for you to I consider, I guess. Okay, it'll include a cover letter signed by the county representative who will be responsible for the project and the CEO of the nonprofit partner. They're all looking at you. It's okay. Well, I can help. <laughs> It's not the sign up for us. So it'll probably be around September 1, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I know about that, you think? I mean, I don't they, know. They might not even know about it. I don't know. They might be on ball, on ball so much that they don't even know about it. Right on. No, Barbara was. Oh, Barbara. She came, it came through on our email. Yeah. yeah. But 
you know, if it's coming to the counties, if I think about some of the things that I want to pull in here, um, if I can. Again, I don't know. I would like to squeeze in there some of the background about why we're the best qualified organization to do this because we've already been working on things that relate to social determinants of health. Um, I don't, if I think about healthy communities, participants around the state, most of them are not counties. We're better at communicating you to the county. You <laughs> 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 so, Maybe. There are, I, mean, I have not seen this one come through. I mean, we, we are on the list served with Kansas Health Foundation. They usually tell you about your opportunities, and I didn't see this through that. So. Wow. Maybe, maybe we have an exclusive. I don't know. You gotta try. Maybe you may not be any better position than anybody else, but you gotta try. Right. Less than five hundred thousand. Um, it wants the rural counties less than five hundred thousand. Clearly a lot of um, Kansas would qualify, but when I think about those who I don't know even Lawrence would qualify with them. Less than five hundred thousand. Yeah, population. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know what Lawrence's population is, but it'd be less than 500,000. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Lawrence does a lot of this yeah. stuff. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> I imagine the Shawnee is over 500. Cedric and Johnson. Johnson. Why not? Maybe Shawnee. But then it drops off. Yeah. Okay. So right, very good. Cool. Right. good. Do I just bring it to you or do I need to bring it to a commission meeting? I think just bring it to the commission. So I have to, yeah. to make sure that I'm on a Wednesday before it's due. We're way behind on our calendars. Let's do September 4th. Mm -hmm. We meet on the third. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Or we meet on the 26th. I'm not counting on that. <laughs> like a week in advance. You'll have to get mailed that day. Well, it's electronically submitted. Oh. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's still not going to be mailed to the third all night. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ready? All right. Procrastination and its finest. <laughs> I can relate to that. <laughs> you are. I'm just going to throw out there. Not great on camera, so <laughs> I might throw my game off a little bit. Uh, just not even there. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm Jacob Rilla, um myself, and a colleague came in about a month and a half ago. I don't know if you guys remember. No, Clayton does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw him the other day at the hospital. We did a a workshop there with some of the board, but uh, we do facility related uh, or facility upgrades, energy related upgrades. Uh, and so what we just did was I did a brief walkthrough with Teresa and the facilities operator and uh, just got an idea, a feel for what you guys have, what facilities or what you guys are using in your facilities, heating and cooling wise, your lighting, uh, condition of the windows and roofs. And you guys are doing a great job, uh, but there are opportunities for improvement. That's kind of what I want to come talk to you guys about and see if there's any interest in moving forward from there. So you want to open up to the executive summary. Uh, I think the first thing that's going to pop out is, is the pie graph right there that shows what you guys are spending on utilities per year. You spend about $30,000, what we're seeing, electric, gas, and water. And what, what we think we could save you is about $8,500, so about 30%, 28%, I guess, uh, of those utility spendings. And this number is on a square foot basis, so what you're spending on it, on a square foot basis compared to what we would expect a facility like this one with, with this amount of occupants in this climate to be spent. So we would expect to be, to be able to save you about $8,500. Uh, there are some potential opportunities right there. The web-based controls and the lighting system, those are the two biggest energy savings projects that we, that we have, uh, but also Replacing some HVAC is going to see a little bit of savings, but again, the lighting and lighting controls are where you're going to really see the savings. Why we did this project is to see if 
there are opportunities for improvements, and like I said, there, there definitely are, but we wanted to see uh, if it necessitates any further analysis. And again, that's kind of where we want to see if you guys have any interest in that. So if there, there aren't any questions, kind of go to the, to the building assessments. And this first set of, of line graphs right here, kind of want to delve into a little bit. Could be a little confusing. The blue line is electrical consumption, which you guys are using. Uh, this And this is between the courthouse and the annex. Um, I started doing them individually, but since you guys share gas bills between the two of them, I just, I just combined them. Okay. Uh, so electrical usage, as you can see here, you're spending about 20% higher than what we would expect. And this is on a kilo, kilo BTU uh, basis, so it's converted from kilowatt hours just so we can do uh, compare apples to apples with the gas and the electric. Uh, so on a kilo BTU per square foot basis, you guys are spending about 20% higher than what somebody in the 75th, 75th percentile, uh, how they're performing. So you guys are a little higher there. And with electric, that is much more expensive than natural gas right now, and has been for the past 20 years or whatever. So uh, if you had to choose, you'd want to be high on gas, obviously, but you can't choose, and you guys are higher on, on electric. Some of the reasons we think that might be, again, is uh, you have outdated lighting. You have some T <clears throat> T12s and T8 lightings, which uh, T8 was kind of the standard up until about a year or two ago, and that's when LED started to really make sense. You see some, some great energy savings there, as well as the control system. And what, what a control system allows you to do is uh, schedule a time for, you guys are here probably 8 to 5, or the occupants here 8 to 5, ballpark. So when people leave at 5 p.m., 6, uh, setting a control system, it allows the temperature to drop uh, to the most ener energy efficient and most effective temperature. So the building's obviously not in, not occupied, so you don't need to have it cool in the summer or heated in the winter. So well, with the exception of the sheriff, yeah, so they're here 24 hours. Okay, um, is that in the annex or in the courthouse? Okay. okay. Well, with, with the control yeah. system, yeah. there's individual uh, controls, so he would be able to run his heating or cooling, whatever season it is, and everybody else could uh, have that temperature drop off. Um, for, for the fuel, that's what the yellow or gold line is there. It's kind of unique. You guys are spot on with the 75th percentile. So I guess if we're in school, you, you get a C plus there. Um, <laughs> so you guys are doing well. Um, obviously with the controls, again, I think we're showing that we wouldn't save you any money on, on natural gas, but I think that there would be uh, at least a few hundred dollars, if not a thousand dollars a year or so on savings just with the controls alone. And then finally, the third line is just the combination of the two. Uh, again, we would expect about 55.3 kilo BTUs per square foot, and you guys are right at 50, and most of that, well, all of that is coming from the electrical usage that you guys have. So are there any questions on your guys' consumption use? Anything not making sense so far? Okay. Uh, the next set of graphs is what you guys are spending on a per square foot basis. Again. You guys are about 30 cents higher on the electrical use. <coughs> and you can't really look too much into this because, you know, it's a little crazy. Um, you can't look too much into this because utility rates are different for Stafford County or Harvey County or any other county. So you can't look too deep into this, but again, you guys are spending uh, quite a bit more on a per square foot basis than we would expect. So that is definitely something that uh, we don't have any answers to right now, but in the next step, that's something we'd want to take a look at and see how we can reduce that, that number. What, wind turbine? Well, wind turbine? <laughs> Maybe over 100 years, but yeah. Uh, and then the, the estimated savings potential, again, I kind of touched on all the savings would come from, from electrical. We think we can save you about $8,400, $8,500 just on electrical alone. Uh, and then I think that number would, would grow with some controls for the, for the natural gas. Any questions on the savings amount? Oh, well, that's good. Okay, next I want to talk about what I saw when I walked through with Teresa. Um, I talked to her, I talked to Lisa in the treasurer's office. I think those two had the most to say probably throughout the facility and definitely got some good feedback. First of all, with your HVAC systems, 
focus on a McQuay air-cooled chiller, which Teresa didn't actually know the age of it. It looks to be about 10 to 15 years old. You think it is older than that? Yeah, there's usually a nameplate on there, but it was, I don't know if it's from all the hail damage or something, but it's not legible at all. So that, that's kind of what we were thinking, about 15 years old. Uh, those usually last about 30 years, so if it is any older than that, uh, maybe further analysis would make sense in that case. Um, however, it is running constantly at this point. I think that's a big reason for the, for the electrical consumption. In the treasurer's office, Lisa did, uh, she did bring up some comfort issues there that it is a big room, and so uh, on one side of the room it's really cold, on the other side of the room they tend to get a little warmer, so there's some arguments, I think, in that room between where to keep the thermostat at. Um, also, humidity issues in there. She said there is a legal obligation to report a certain humidity level. However, she doesn't think that they're actually meeting that requirement. Legally, you are, so that is something that we would take a look at, too, the humidity. And that's kind of where our expertise is in the, in the engineering to make sure that everything's working properly, everybody is as comfortable as they can be. Obviously not everybody is going to be perfectly comfortable, but try to make as many people happy as possible. Uh, at the annex, you guys have the, I think, eight or nine split systems over there. What we see is about 13 or 14 years coming up right at the 15 year life expectancy for those. So that is an opportunity to be proactive. Uh, Teresa made it sound like you guys weren't having any big issues with those at this point. But again, we, we do expect those to kind of start having a challenge at 15 years and you guys are coming up on the 14 year mark. Um, so that, that's all with the HVAC systems. You guys have a, a convincing boiler that seems to be doing pretty well, but again, putting some controls on those to, to save some money on natural gas. How are those units of the annex that old? From the they weren't. Oh, they weren't? Okay, that's about right. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if they were used yeah. or not. No. Yeah. Uh, on the nameplate, I think it said June of 2002. So they did Yeah, yeah. Again, the building automation controls, you guys don't have any. You're just using those nice old fashioned uh, thermostats there. So that's definitely a potential upgrade to put some modern web based controls in so that way you. We're not just controlling it from our office in Lawrence. You guys will have access, just as long as you have internet, you'll have access to get on there and uh, change the set points and set back temperatures for that. Um, the lighting systems, I kind of touched on the T12. You guys have that, it's probably 50-50 between T12 lighting and T8 lighting from what, from what I observed. T12 lighting, they don't even manufacture it in the US anymore. It's been outdated since about 1995. Uh, it has about 15 to 20 hour uh, life expectancy. T8 has about 30,000, so it's, it's about double that. LED has 60,000 run hours. Uh, and we kind of estimate that you guys are running 25 to 3,000 run hours in your guys' office per year. So on that estimate, you wouldn't have to change your LED bulbs for 20 years, which would save a lot of maintenance savings, um, which we haven't really taken account for in, the, in our savings estimate, but maintenance savings would be a big part of the lighting fixtures. Uh, with the T12 lightings, you guys have the magnetic ballast, so when the light's about to get out, it kind of flickers and the light diminishes. T8 has elect electronic, so there's you get rid of the flicker, mm -hmm. but LED doesn't use any ballast at all, so we, we would totally eliminate the ballast and get rid of uh, those completely. Electrical systems, yeah, the biggest complaint actually that I saw and heard from Teresa and other occupants were the amount of electrical outlets in your facility. Uh, apparently you guys have a, a huge shortage of them and we, we have done some projects where we've implemented outlets, you know, just put some, put some more in rooms. We have an electrical engineer who, who designs that instead of just having an electrical contractor come and put them in anywhere and make it look bad all over the walls and all the floor. Uh, we have an engineer design that specifically for uh, to meet your guys' needs. And then finally, the fan coil units, we weren't sure on the age of those either. 
I have a feeling some of them are probably still original to the building. So these don't really have a life expectancy at the hospital. We're replacing ones that are about 50 years old. My prediction, you guys aren't far behind that 50 years. So that's an opportunity to not so much create energy savings, but to just upgrade your guys' facilities a little bit, if you so desire. Uh, then the savings opportunities, I, I don't want to belabor too much. I've kind of touched on that as we've gone along. The lighting, again, about double the life expectancy for the LED bulbs. Web-based controls, um, big savings for your HVAC controls and for the, the boiler. And then if you guys wanted to look into replacing the split systems on the annex, that's definitely Right down our alley, that's our expertise is helping you guys come up with the correct equipment for that size building. As far as windows and roofs, I think you guys put storm windows on like 15 years ago. Uh, that was what Teresa was estimating, and you guys did some work on the roof this summer. So obviously those probably aren't top priority for you right now. But <laughs> excuse me, that was if you were here, they come through. Um, so what we have is energy savings projects. Just from initial observations, you guys aren't going to be spending a million dollars. At the hospital, they have $2 million worth of work. It, it, it's a big project, but I think uh, we're not going to get anywhere near that. We kind of just take care of the base stuff. Here, I'm estimating between like $150,000 to $300,000 of potential work that we found for you guys. Uh, that's one of the the problems with this report, I guess, is there's not a price that comes with it. It's just identifying what could be done. And so in the next steps, I kind of want to take a minute to talk about what we would want to do next. It's called the preliminary engineering audit. And this is where we would give you an idea of what an actual project would look like. So if you guys decide you want to look at lighting, controls, and new split systems, but forget the fan coil units, we'd come back with a price for each of those, the scope of work. Uh, as well as what energy savings we would generate from those. Uh, this is no cost to you guys. It's going to be much more detailed than this. I think uh, Mr. Grimmett saw it the other day. Much more detailed. Yeah. Um, <coughs> we're too bored by it. Um, so we would look at the pros and cons of doing each of those as well as what energy savings come along with that. The investment grade audit would come after that. This would be your first financial commitment. This is after you look at the preliminary audit and say, we want to make these changes and we want to work with you guys to do it. We want to have you guys do a turnkey for us. Uh, there's a contingency fee, or a walkaway fee, if you will, that if you guys decide that you don't want to work with us upon completion of that, then you guys will owe us a fee. This is really a lose-lose situation for both of us. For us, uh, we put forth a lot of time and resources into this. And for you guys, you want to get some work done, but something went wrong, and so you just you wasted your time and you had to pay some money for basically stuff that didn't happen. So investment grade audit, hopefully, is where you guys decide if we want to go ahead and move forward with the project. Project construction, we have a construction manager, we have just a general contractor, so he'll he'll be on staff to make sure that uh, everything's going well, everything's on <clears throat> on time. He'll hold some weekly meetings with you. I'd obviously be a part of that meeting. Uh, make sure there aren't any challenges going on uh, with implementation. Uh, finally, performance maximization. <coughs> Once we complete a project, we'll stick with you for about 18 to 24 months just to make sure that there are no kinks in the system, that everything's working fine. We're going to measure those savings. And any shortcomings on the savings, we're going to write you guys a check right there and then. Um, and we just want to make sure that everything's working perfectly. Inherently, there will be some kinks in the system. That always happens, but we're not just going to finish the project and be on our way. We're going to make sure that everything's working properly as we designed it. And finally, just a schedule of how we would anticipate things would work out. Uh, obviously, I, I came back today from two months ago. We did the introduction, kind of told you a little bit about ourselves and what we do. And I came back last month with Teresa walk through the facilities. Today I'm going over those results. So what we want to do next is that preliminary audit, which again is, is no cost to you guys, and it's just what a project would look like if this is uh, a priority of your guys' at all. The only commitment is 
time to come back and go over those results. And you guys have an open mind moving forward. The investment grade audit, we're, we're expecting somewhere around December at this point. And then we would go into implementation spring or summer of 2016. So that's kind of what I have for you guys, as well as the projects that are most similar <coughs> to what we anticipate a project like this would be. Marshall County, Republic County, and El Saline are all lighting controls based with some HVAC improvements. The last one, El Saline, it had about a seven or eight year payback. So that's kind of what we're anticipating with you guys to see. A bunch of savings, but as well as modernizing your, your facilities and coming up with some improvements for performance. That's what I have for you guys. I'll, I'll welcome any feedback or questions or would you need to know at this time what whether we just limited the light lighting or we we could absolutely yeah. take a look at look at everything and let you guys decide from there uh, once you see a final price if that's something worth worth pursuing. But I mean seeing the final price on all the things where I mean that's no cost to us, right? Correct. Yeah. For for this next step, it, it, they're gonna be preliminary so it'll be a range of right. sixty to eighty thousand dollars or something like that. Uh, it's not till the next step, the investment grade audit, that we'll have a final price for you guys. But at that point we can pick and choose what we want. Correct. You guys have any interest in upgrading any of these things that we've talked about? Have you looked into them in well, the past? Eight thousand dollars a year is eight thousand dollars a year. Right. I mean, that, I guess the hangup that I've got is as tight as our budgets are. It's right. How we're going to afford three hundred thousand dollars of projects? Well, we do the the financing, so we're going to do up to thirty years, but practically twenty years or fifteen, and we'll show uh, a cash flow in that preliminary audit the next step. We would show what savings we would generate and then basically what money on a per year basis you guys would have to come up with. It won't get any cheaper either. No. Electricity. Right. Right. I, yeah, I mean, I'm hardly how you get budget for that. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen to We count for a 3% escalation rate per year. So not too aggressive, but. Who knows? Right. Natural gas has been pretty steady, so that one's a little easier at this point to kind of keep track of. Yeah. I don't have any problems. Well, I, I, yeah. I, mean, I would say lag lighting is probably the yeah. lighting yeah. number one on there. Okay. And the control. I mean, I can't do that. Expensive. I'm not sure we didn't want to control from. So right, no. Some, yeah. the, the school did that at Florida Beach. Yeah. They is that right? Control it at all. Several schools have it. Yeah, that, it, is, that is a joke. Right? Yeah, there are some control systems that like control the refrigerator and they don't have access to unlocking the refrigerator. Or something. This was just a heater and the air conditioner. Really? Yeah, so, yeah, I, I think that was right. they can only vary yeah. about one degree at the school. Yeah, we're, we're not going to have that. I mean, we will have that access, but we're not going to control. We will give you guys that control. There's no need to have to call in to have right. somebody change your yeah. air conditioner. That's right. I'm like a barn in middle school that was controlled in Florida. Yeah. It's controlled in Florida? <laughs> uh -huh. St. John's is in Wichita, but that's still bad enough. Yeah, that's. It's a mess. Okay, so we'll look at lagging controls. Are you guys interested in having us look at the fan coil units anymore? I mean, this was just Lisa's hypothesis. The fan foil units weren't working very well. So we kind of diagnose those a little bit more, take a look at them. You can do it on that. I know the one up on the fourth floor is shot. Okay. Yeah. It wouldn't hurt to look at them. No, need to change them all. And then the split systems over at the NX. Do you guys want us to get a price on those for you, or? What did you really think of that? Or the, the way the annex is cool. When I did the walkthrough, there was a county fair here, so that building was locked up and I didn't have access in there. So it's pretty strange. I wish we could get rid of those collapsible. Yeah. <laughs> that is a joke. In the annex? Yes. Have well, you been through the, there? The big room in there you has collapsible. I got to go there and look. Okay. Yeah. 
So whenever the air conditioner kicks on, you hear this rumbling going well, down through the room. All of a sudden, it gets it in and pops real loud. And, just... and nobody knows what's going on. Yeah, and everybody's Everybody looking, looking like, like we're getting bombed. You know. <laughs> it's probably not a good, good atmosphere there. Yeah, we can have an engineer look at it. I'll look at it and I'll have no idea. But an engineer will probably be able to figure that out, hopefully. There's a, uh, a unit above the ceiling in the lobby. And then the rest of them, I think, are in the back. It does cool pretty good. Yeah, yeah it, it does. It does. It, 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 it cools fast, but it just the noise level is unbelievable when it comes on. Yeah, that class. Well, <coughs> it was probably cheaper to put those in. And I've never seen anything like it or anywhere else. But state of the art, huh? <laughs> Not quite. Okay. I'll well, I bet you his father in law talking. Yeah. Howard probably talked no. about that. <laughs> Those were after, weren't they? No, no that was all oh, that. My son did all that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, all that. Uh, Howard was going to pinch everything. Very good. Yeah. Who were you guys interested in a lot more electrical outlets? Not a, not a top priority for you guys? I think so. Okay. Well, it, it would be nice, but yeah. <laughs> How many are in the treasurer's office? Uh, it is an issue in the treasurer's office just because of the number of people and the equipment because of the number of people. So it's kind of tricky figuring out where to plug things in and you know how you can run extension cords right. or how you can move <laughs> That can be a mess. Well, yeah. Extension yeah. cords. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd look at it. Is that and the then, only place? Is the treasurer's office? Uh, I don't think well, no one's I mean, that I'm aware of. You know, I don't about. really, I don't know down in the sheriff's office what it's like there. Or well, that was done when they put in the new uh, dispatch. Sheriff's office was fine. Okay. They didn't have things all place. done. I would say the treasurer's office is probably going to be the biggest place just well, because of the number. I'd go ahead and get it done. Let's take a look at those. Blowing up equipment or something. <laughs> <laughs> You guys have anything else you want me to take a look at, or is that pretty much? That's all. I think awesome. that'll cover it. Okay, well, I'll head over to the annex, take a look at what you guys have going on over there. Hopefully, don't get bombed or anything. But appreciate your guys' time. Yeah. Thank you, Will. Because Carolyn, she, she was just here. The two ladies over here. Okay. She can turn it on for you if it doesn't She's on. she's over on. As you go in the front, her office is over in the, in the east level hall. hall. Okay. Or the east. And east what was her name? Carolyn Dunn. Or the extension council can turn it on for you if they are not there. And it's probably should be around there somewhere. Okay. That's what I'd find. And it's probably that you could probably go through the kitchen head area and go into the community room. Okay. Because sometimes the doors are locked, so I mean that's about Alright. You guys have a key or something? No. I was gonna say if you have any issues come to the clerk's office and you can Yeah. Yeah. That's where we get to get the key. That's fine. So. <laughs> She's around here somewhere? Well, yeah. she actually had a doctor appointment, uh, so she'll be in a little bit later. So if you need something, just find me. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And then, now you're Jacob. I'm Jacob, yeah. Now, where's, where's Joe at? He had some uh, yeah. higher obligations. Okay. So <laughs> probably a school board meeting or something. Something like that, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> now, he, he couldn't make it, but yeah. yeah. No, that's fine. He, he'll be part of the process from now on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a better presenter than I he is, know. right? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, well, last week he talked more than you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've never done that stuff. <laughs> but uh, we'll be back in town on Monday. Would that be a good time to bring an engineer to walk through the facilities again? I'll try to get in contact with Teresa again. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll plan on okay. being back Monday and then schedule a time in a month or two to send what we find you guys. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Thank Have you. a safe trip. All right. Well, thanks. Anything else? That is it. We will adjourn.